Hey there and welcome. It's Jenna from McGuire. I'm glad you're here. Today I wanted to show a fun twist on the good old-fashioned embossed resist technique and that's to add black on top. I've done this in an online card class in the past and I thought I'd kind of resurrect it here. And you can see the really cool impact that you get with that bold color with black around it. I will be using these stamp sets from Gina K Designs. I first started with her cardstock and I was really impressed with it, so I decided to try some of her stamps and inks and I'm really happy. I'll be using her inks today also. However, you could use pretty much any stamp image you want for this technique, so try whatever you've been dying to use. Here are the inks. These are dye inks, and I find that they work very similar to the My Favorite Things dye inks, Lawn Fawn dye inks, Hero Art Shadow inks. They all have kind of a similar formulation, and they stamp really nice. This is my favorite kind of formulation of ink. I'm looking, I have to play around with them a little bit more to see if there's much of a difference, but so far I'm really happy with them, and the colors are beautiful. So I've cut some Nina White cardstock down. This is about two and a half by three and a half inches. And I am first stamping with that light pink ink. And now I have inked the same stamp up with a more of a red ink. And I'm dabbing off some of the ink around the outside edge so that there's just a re that red ink towards the center of the flower and it kind of blends off into nothing. And I'm going to look through the stamp and line it up and stamp it once again right on top of the first image. With images like this one, it's very easy to look through and see those white lines and know that you're lining it up before you stamp it. You could use a stamp positioner if you want to be sure, but I had no problem lining this one up. Here I'm doing the other flower. I first stamped it with the light ink, and now I've inked it up with the darker ink, dabbed some of the ink away from the edges, and I'm stamping it right on top. And by the way, that's a dry cloth that I'm using to dab away some of the ink. Okay, so now it's time for the leaves. Here I'm using a Gina K green ink, and I'll link the colors uh, in my description below. I'm stamping it with the green, but I didn't have two shades of green ink. So I wanted to show you a trick. In case you don't have a lot of ink, you can use your marker to scribble right on the stamp, and I'm just scribbling like an olive color, just on part of that leaf, kind of towards the center, stamping it right on top, and that gives me that two-tone look again. So check out your markers. Any non-permanent markers, these are Tombow, work well for stamping, and this is a great way um, to get another color for your stamp layering techniques. So if you don't have a ton of inks, don't worry. You can do a lot of these techniques still. Just try your markers. Here you can see that beautiful shading that you get by layering the colors on top of each other. Okay, now I'm just heat setting this with my heat gun just to make sure it's completely dry. And I'm hitting it with my anti-static powder tool. This makes sure that the embossing powder only is where I want it. Okay, so now we're going to heat emboss over all of these images. You can see my dog wants to play, so every once in a while you'll see her nose pop in. I'm going to stamp each of these images on top, once again, a third layer. This is Versamark ink, a clear ink. This will allow us to heat emboss these images. So I'm going to stamp right on top of all of these. Now, if you have pigment inks, you could have used pigment inks for the first layers, and then you could skip this step and just put the embossing powder right on top of the pigment inks because pigment inks stay wet for a while. But I had dye inks, and I think a lot of people have dye inks, so I wanted to show you that you can still heat emboss dye inks. So I stamped on top of each of them with the Versamark. Now I'm putting on some clear embossing powder and heat setting it, and now we have a heat embossed image. Now this is where the fun happens. We're going to take a black marker. This is a black Tombow marker. Just make sure it's not a Copic. Copic would not work here. And you're going to scribble over the entire image. I just do a little area at a time and then I wipe it clean with a dry cloth. And by wiping it, I'm removing the black ink from the heat embossed areas. That heat embossing is resisting the black ink. You could also take a black ink pad and smush it all over this. But I find that it's just faster to use a marker and I can do smaller areas and wipe it clean quicker because you don't want any of that ink drying on top of that heat embossing. And check it out, you get this bright color with the, my dog likes it too, with the black ink around it. And since that embossing powder kind of expands a little bit when it heat sets, you get tiny little bit of white trim around the stamped image too. And it really makes it pop. It's just beautiful in real life. And you could get this look by using, like stamping the images and using colored embossing powder on black paper, but who has a lot of colored embossing powders? 
Here are some other color combinations I did. Now there are many things you can do with this technique. Here's one idea. You could take a pattern paper that you like. You could stamp with Versamark all your images, clear heat emboss them, put the black ink over it, and what you end up with is black with stamped images that actually have that pattern paper showing through. So basically you can trap anything under heat embossing and put black around it and get a really cool effect. You could do other colors besides black too. You could do a blue background or whatever color background that you want want to. At the end of this video, I'll link to a video that I did recently where I trapped watercolor underneath heat embossing and then added more watercolor on top. Okay, for a sentiment, I'm using my friend from this Gina K stamp set, and I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool. Then I'm stamping it with Versamark ink and adding white embossing powder. I thought that white uh, stamped image, the embossed image, would really pop against that black background. Now you can still see that anti-static powder tool around the background, so just rub it away with your finger as soon as the heat embossing has cooled. Okay, so now for the other cards, I actually stamped three leaves instead of two, so I didn't have room for my friend underneath it. So I cut apart the words my friend so that I could stack them and put them in the small area. This is a great way to get more out of your sentiments and fit them into areas that they might not fit as they're intended. Okay, so I stamped my right above the word friend, both with Versamark ink, adding my white embossing powder, and there we have a sentiment that fits into that smaller area. Now, I'll be honest here. I struggled with what to do on the background of this card, but when all else fails, I like to create a tone-on-tone -tone background using the same stamps that I use in my focal image. So I took those same flowers and leaves, put them together on an acrylic block, and I'm stamping them repeatedly over the background with Versamark ink. Now I have a stamp pad from Sizzix underneath this. Since I'm stamping so many images that are large, that stamp pad has a little give to it and allows you to get a better stamped image. You could also use it as a mouse pad if you have that instead. So I started in one corner and kind of worked my way over and across the entire background. Now I'm adding some clear embossing powder. Now what happens with clear embossing powder with a clear ink on a background is it just gets darker in that area, darker and shiny. So you get a great tone on tone background with lots of fun texture. So when all else fails and you can't figure out what to do on a background, try this. Especially with the images that I created earlier with the black background, it's so bold. I thought it'd be fun to have these bold colored backgrounds also. So these background embossed pieces are four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm just gonna glue it right onto the front of a top folding white note card that I created. And I'm just gonna use some long scissors to trim anything up that didn't line up perfectly. Now I wanted my uh, black embossed piece to really pop up and stand out on the card. So I'm putting some craft foam behind it. This gives it a little bit of dimension, but it's even. Um, anytime you adhere something with foam tape, sometimes it, get, it gets crushed in the mail. So I like to use a piece of craft foam so that it makes it through the mail okay. And I also decided to change up this design a little bit. And I adhered this up against the edge of my card instead of in the center. So to kind of go with that design, I only put a white mat behind it on three sides so it only shows on the three sides and not on the right now you could also stamp these flowers on the inside of the card to make it match and on the envelope if you want to so there's a way you can do emboss resist with a black marker to get a really cool effect I hope you'll give this a try to see the products I use they're linked below in my YouTube description or you can click there on the top left to go to my blog in the middle are two videos that might be of interest. The first is the same technique, but using watercolor. It's really a great technique. And then next to that on the right is a video showing how to create some monochromatic backgrounds. Very simple to do. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll come back again soon.